Okay, English 101, everybody's handed in their essay one. And I've had a chance to look at a lot of your homework. Looks like most everybody's doing really well. Uh, a few of you guys had maybe some issues figuring out where to hand things in. That's fine. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to help you through, walk you through. A lot of you guys have been reaching out to me during my office hours. That's what they're there for, okay? So um, yes, we are virtual, but I am very accessible to you via office hours in this virtual format. So on Mondays, I try to be on as much as possible. And usually I'm on between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. So I'm just like there the whole time. If you need to reach out to me, a lot of you guys already have. And it's been really nice to meet uh, a lot of you guys. But many of you guys probably should. Some, some of you probably should reach out to me. So don't be shy. I'm more than happy to help. The thing is, I can only help you if you ask. I can't read your mind, and I don't know the difference between a person just not doing their work and sloughing off and you know being lazy versus a person who's really trying, but hey, I'm just struggling a little bit. So let me help you. Always uh, feel free to reach out to me. If for some reason you can't reach out to me during one of the office hours, reach out to me via email and just be really specific about, okay, I'm in this class. This is the issue. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to give you any problems. I'm really trying to help. So um, so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing this week. And like I said, most everybody is doing fantastic. I really uh, looks like uh, some good work, um, some good papers that I'm, I'm looking at. So I'll be grading your essays over the next week or so. Uh, maybe it usually takes me a couple of weeks. Normally the way this works is um, I, I always promise to make sure your essay is in at least. Uh, class period before the next one is due. When I'm doing virtual, I try to make sure that I have everything graded by the time you do a peer review for the next essay. So that's just to give you an idea of how long it should take me to, to grade your essays. Let me take a look. Let's take a look at the syllabus. So last week on by Friday, you handed in your, um, your final draft and you handed in all your process homework. So that was your uh, brainstorming, clustering, free writing, audience awareness, outline, all of that in one file, and you handed that in in the correct uh, in, the, in the link that was that was designated as such. Uh, also, you should have read the essay two assignment sheet, and I did assign those two readings. So our, our new readings will be Love in the Age of Like and Growing Up Tethered. One of them is in your textbook. The other is on uh, the Blackboard page, and I'm going to show you those real quick. But first, let's take a look at the assignment. Um, we're done with the SA1 folder, so we're not going to be messing with that anymore. Now we're going to the SA2 project materials folder, and Love in the Age of Like is right here, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But first, um, let's take a look at the SA. Let's see, where is that? Uh, the SA2 assignment sheet. Uh, I'm just, I haven't had enough coffee today. Um, there it is. It's in red. It's in red and it was right in front of me. <laughs> okay. Easy to find right there. SA2 assignment sheet. Yeah. I need a little bit more coffee. So here is, here is the assignment sheet and um, it's a two to four page paper. So that means you need to have at least two completed uh, pages and that doesn't include your works cited page. We're going to talk about your works cited entry in a minute. Uh, so two to four pages, all the same thing. So all of these papers have to be Times New Roman, 12 point font, 2.0 spacing. And again, I gave you a document with all of that already done for you in the SA1 folder. If you wanna go back to that and use that as a template, just so you know, all the formatting is correct. Be my guest, that's why I put it there. Uh, this essay must also include a works cited page. Okay. And that doesn't count as far as your page requirement. So you should have bare minimum, two full pages of essay. And then the third page, you know, worst case scenario is where you're going to put your, um, your uh, works cited entry. You might go longer than that, but you need to at least have two full pages of essay and then also a works cited entry. Okay. Now I'm going to want you to, I want you to read all of this. Okay. You need to read this. You need to be able to read and comprehend your assignment. But let me just give you basically what this assignment is. You're going to read one of the two assigned readings. You're gonna to have to do summaries for both of them, right? 
But then what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of the two readings and you're going to respond to that. If you've ever seen a reaction video, that's kind of what you're doing in a essay format. Basically, you're going to give, you're going to point out things that the author said and then give me your opinions on those things. So for instance, you know, maybe the author says something that you disagree with. Well, okay, in one paragraph in your essay, one of the body paragraphs, you're going to tell why you disagree with that. Maybe you agree with it. Maybe you found it funny. Maybe you found it odd. Maybe you can totally relate to it. That's all we're doing in this essay. The thing we're not doing, okay? We are not doing a book report. So I don't want this essay to be, I don't want you to write a, a book report over, hey, this is what the author said. Don't just repeat what the author said to me. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your opinion on what this author wrote in his or her article. That's what I'm looking for. So that is the big thing to think about in this assignment. Okay, let's go back. And when you do that, you're gonna introduce, you're gonna have an introduction paragraph where you introduce the main idea of your art, of your essay with a thesis statement, okay? And your thesis statement is gonna be a, your opinion on what the author said, okay? And, and I've, I'll go into that a little bit more and then I've got some video lectures that you're gonna to need to watch this week about that. Then your first body paragraph, okay? Your first body paragraph it says provide a detailed account of what you read for your reader. So you have to let your reader know, hey, this is what the article was about. You can't assume that your reader already knows what the article is about. It's, it's kind of like whenever maybe you, you went to see a movie and you want to tell your friend about the cool parts and the, the awful parts or whatever. You kind of need to give your friend like a synopsis of the movie first before you get into the little details that you thought were cool or the things that were not cool. That's what you're doing. You can't assume that your reader, so the person that's reading your eventual essay, you can't assume that person has already read the article, okay? So in college, we can't just assume that, you know, hey, you're in the class, you're my teacher, of course you've read it. We're not writing, you're not writing this for me. You're not writing this you know, just as a school project anymore. We're, we're practicing writing formally. So when you write something, when you, that you need to say, this is what the thing was, okay? I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I think about this thing. And I need to tell you what that thing is, right? So you give me a synopsis, a summary, right? Of what you read. And yes, you can just copy and paste your summary right into your essay. So your first body paragraph, so that'd be the second paragraph of your essay, can literally just be your summary of the article that you read, okay? Because that does what we need it to do. That tell, that's a synopsis, that's a summary of the article. Then all of the rest of the body paragraphs, all the rest of the body paragraphs, you're gonna to respond to the reading clearly and in an organized way. So you can read, I want you to read this part, but basically what you're gonna do is all of the rest of the body paragraphs, you're gonna maybe pick out little things that you want to say something about. You have some kind of a commentary, some kind of an opinion about. So you'll start the paragraph off, you know, the author said this, this, and this. And, this, and then the rest of the paragraph is, I think that's really funny. And I think it's funny because of this, or I can completely relate to this because my friend had this happen to him or her. Right. So, so the rest of the body paragraphs should be, you're going to be picking out things from the article that you're going to write a paragraph, just what you think about it, what your comment is about it. It needs to be clear what your opinions are. Okay. That's the goal of this essay. You know, yes, you're going to be quoting from the article or you're going to be saying, Hey, the, the author said this and this at the beginning of each body paragraph, but you need to make sure the rest of the paragraph is just what you think about it and why you think that, okay? It's, it's kind of a simple pro, uh, project here. And then you're gonna have a conclusion, okay? So not too hard. This, this is a, usually a pretty easy essay for most people as long as you don't, as long as you understand the assignment, okay? And so I've made a lot of little videos 
to help you understand this assignment. And I want you to watch those. So if you take a look at our syllabus, I go over the ones, the, some of the things you're gonna need to do this week. So this is week six. By the end of this week, you need to complete brainstorming, clustering, or um, or brainstorming. Well, I guess free writing. I should have, there's a typo there. So free writing, I'll have to correct that. You're gonna complete your audience awareness paragraphs, okay? And you're gonna begin an outline for your essay. Also, I want you to read, you know what? I think we have a different textbook. So don't worry about this reading right now. But basically you should read both of the assigned readings and decide which one you are going to write your essay on. Now you don't, you don't have to have the summaries handed in until week seven, okay? So the end of next week, you'll have to summarize those. So you can be working on those things, but you should read them both so that you can say, okay, I know I have to write an essay about one or the two of these, which one do I have the most opinions on, right? Which one would I prefer writing my essay about? Which one does the author make enough points or make the points that I actually have an opinion on? Sometimes authors don't make points that you even care about, right? And, and, and I'm sorry if neither one of these do. I think Aziz and Zari, generally most people can at least relate to that because it talks about dating. But um, Sherry Turkle also, she talks about how we're stuck in our devices and we're stuck in our cell phones and all these things. So I think you can relate to both of these topics, but essentially read both of them as soon as you can. Okay. And decide, okay, which one do I think I'm going to write my essay about? You don't have to summarize them immediately, but that, the, but essentially know which one you're going to respond to. And then that way this week, you can start thinking about like when you're doing your brainstorming, clustering, or free writing, you don't have to do all three this time, just one. When you're doing that, you can actually start thinking about, okay, what did the author say? And what are my opinions on that? You know, and just write those things out. I've got a video for you that I'll guide you, that guides you through a little bit better, but that's essentially all you're going to do. And you're going to complete your audience awareness paragraph. Okay. Who is my audience? And who is the audience that this author is writing to? I want you to think about those things. And then you can start beginning your outline this week. So you don't have to hand anything in this week. You're just starting on the next essay. Now, let me show you where you're going to find your readings for this week or for this assignment. So love in the age of like is right here. So you click here and I'm going to show you because we also have to start doing MLA citation. Many of you already know how to do this, but for some of you guys, it may be your first time. And if it is, you need to pay special attention so that you can, you can be up to date on this. Okay. So this is love in the age of like It is written by a uh, comedian, uh, Aziz Ansari. He's pretty big, early two thousands, not so big anymore, but still pretty funny guy. Uh, he was in parks and recreation. If you ever watched that show, um, but basically what you're going to do is you're only going to read his article. Okay. Just his article. There's another one. Somebody else wrote, you know, because what we have here is a, a this was in print at one time and now it's, it, they digital, they digitalized it. So just read his article. Okay. Now in order to cite his articles, because if you think about it, okay, if we go back to those summaries, any, and, and of course, anytime we, we need to cite something in MLA format, we need to, we need to be able to know how to do that. We need a citation, right? And if you go back to, let's see, the summaries, this is a good example of what I'm looking for. This example summary. So you're gonna to have to do this on your summaries. You, you'll have to have the page range and you're gonna to have to have a works cited entry. Now it's very easy to get this. It's very, very easy. It used to be hard back in my day, back in the olden times, it was hard, but, but right now it is so easy because technology does most of the work for you, does all the work really. All you have to do is copy and paste. Okay, let me show you how to get it. So to get, first of all, you have to get a citation, okay? The works cited entry. And in order to do that, all you have to do is go over here to the right. You can see where my mouse is and you click where it says cite, C-I-T-E. You click there and this, this drop down box comes down, okay? 
then you hover your mouse kind of in the middle and you scroll down and eventually you're going to see where it says MLA. You see that? So that is your works cited entry. You don't, I mean, in olden times and most, most college students who have ever been through college, they had to learn the MLA citation system. And they had to learn why all of these things were placed in these places. So I don't want anybody to be complaining about what you have to do because you've got it so much easier than all of the college students that have gone before you pretty much, okay? <laughs> so literally that is how you get the citation. It used to be we had to look in the book and you had to, I mean, it would take forever. It, it took a long time and then you might get it wrong. But right here, this is the correct citation and it's done for you, okay? You're going to right click, you'll copy and let's just pretend we'll go back to Let's instead of, we'll just delete this works cited entry. Well, actually we'll keep it there just so we have an example to go by, okay? You can do this, you can do this at home. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna use these pasting options and I'm gonna use merge formatting. Now, if you're using Google Docs, it might be a little different, but it's very, there, there is going to be an option where you can either merge formatting or you can keep formatting of your essay. Because if you don't, it's going to look weird. Like you could, you could just do the regular thing. It would look like that. And that's not correct, right? You see how there's a big difference there. But basically what we want to do is we're going to use the same formatting. It needs to be same, the same text size, same font. You need to make sure that the, what, the um, italicized words stay italicized. Okay. And, and so you got to figure that out. Okay. That's, that's, I guess, your challenge, which again, is not a big challenge. You just really just, you can use your software. And if you don't know how to use your software, you've got Google and that will tell you all your answers. So it just takes a little bit of time. Whereas in the olden days, and, I, and I'm not talking that long ago, but most, most time, most of the time, people had to spend a lot more time on this. So now if you notice on this, the example, we've got a hanging indention. So the first line hangs out and the second line is indented. And we don't have that yet on this entry. So what you're gonna to do to get it hanging indention is you're gonna click at the end of the first line. You're gonna press enter. Then you're gonna press tab. Then you're gonna click at the end of the second line. Press enter. Then you're gonna press, then you click at the end of the next line, press enter. And you do that until everything after the first line is indented, but the first line always hangs out, okay? Now we have a hanging indention. Okay, cool, let's just pretend, we'll just delete this. We'll pretend that that's the citation for this summary. Okay, so now if you notice in the summary, we have a citation here. What is there? Well, that is your page range. That, that tells your reader that this summary summarizes everything from page 342 to 349. But that's not the page range that we have in the citation. What's the page range we have in the citation? Well, if you look in the citation, you're gonna see a few things. You're gonna see the author's name. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Notice we gotta take this person out because we're not reading that person. We're reading Aziz and Zari. So we're gonna delete that. Good. Okay, so sometimes you gotta correct these things. You still have to use your brain a little bit. Love in the age of like, okay, that's good. Time Magazine, well, that's the publication. That's why that's in italics, okay? Notice love in the age of like is in quotation marks. So anytime it appears in your summary or in your essay, it should always be in, a, in quotation marks. Same thing with Time Magazine. It's in italics. So it should appear in italics everywhere. Okay, great. Volume number 185. Okay, that's not the page number. Number 22, okay, that, that, that's probably has something to do with the specific edition. June 2015 was when it was published. That's getting older now. But look, PP 40 to 46. Now, wait a minute. That's kind of cool. I can actually go back and I can even look at the bottom of the page because this is a, a replica of what was printed. And I could say, okay, this is probably... I can even do this in my head. So if this, this is page 43 and this is page 42 and this is B41 and this would have to be page 40, okay? 
So, oh, that's what it's saying. Okay, so page 40, and then it goes to page, let's see, let's scroll down. Does it go to page 46? Look, it does. Okay, page 46, right there. Well, that's the page range. Awesome. So that is what we need to have in the parentheses. So we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it in there. Okay, or you can type it in there. Now we have a citation for our par for our essay paragraph, and we have a works cited entry. And it was that easy. That's how quickly I did it. Okay. It was, and did you notice, did I use any kind of weird equations or did I have to do the Dewey Decimal System or anything? No, all I did was I copied and pasted, I pressed enter a few times, and then I copied and pasted again. It's that easy, okay? So anytime you get anything from the VU online library, that is how easy it is to cite those sources. So anytime you do any kind of research, I highly recommend you use the VU online library. Now, the other reading from this, uh, for this selection, uh, for this particular essay is in your textbook, okay? And it is Sherry Turkle. I'm going to just give you that. So if you take a look right here, it says works cited entry for essay two, you click here. Right now, I'm not so concerned about you learning how to do this yet. All I want you to do is copy and paste. I'm not, I want you to understand that you have to have a works cited entry. And I want you to understand that you have to cite directly from the source. And, and you have to, whenever you're using quotes or paraphrases or summaries, you have to use citation. That's what I want you to get into your head for this essay. I don't need you to learn the system just yet. Okay. It's coming, but I'm going to teach you, honestly, I'm going to teach you a bunch of tricks so that you don't really have to use your brain too hard. I know that's probably not what you expect a teacher to say, but let me just say this, there's nothing wrong with using tips and tricks as long as you get the answer right and you're not copying and, and you're not cheating or doing anything wrong, okay? So I'm gonna show you all those things in this class because I don't know about you, but I don't wanna have to work any harder than I just have to, to get the right answer. So that is, that is why we're gonna do it this way but for this essay, all I want you to really think about is, okay, I know now that I am using, I'm going to be, I'm going to be commenting about this particular article. Well, I, I know I'm going to have to use citation now. That's formal writing. That's college level writing. I have to cite and we're using MLA format. I'm not asking you to learn all of MLA yet. I'm never going to ask you to learn all that, but I am going to say, you have to know Okay, you have to have a works cited entry. That's required from now on. And anytime you cite something, anytime you summarize, quote, or paraphrase, you have to cite it appropriately. And the cool thing is I show you how. So what I want you to do for next time, you're going to read those two readings. You know where to get them now. The other one is in your textbook. You can just use the, the works. Uh, you can just use the... Uh, uh, the table of contents in the beginning to find Sherry Turkle's Growing Up Tethered. Table of contents, it's again, very low hanging fruit. This is very easy stuff. So you go to, so what we're gonna do is I want you to go to the lectures for SA2. And here's what you have to read, to, you have to watch this this week, okay? You're gonna watch the SA2 primer, okay? That's where I explain the essay in, in great detail. You're gonna watch SA2 invention activities. Okay, that's where you're gonna learn about, you know, how to, to, to prep for this assignment. Now, you may wanna read the two readings and decide which reading you're going to respond to before you get into these videos. Okay, so I might, I might suggest doing that first, then watching these videos. But basically you're gonna watch this one. So the, the, the primer, invention activities, audience awareness and outlines because the well and also thesis statements you know what let's just watch them all let's just watch them all because you'll also need to know about paraphrasing and quotation in mla format so you know what just make it easy on yourself and just watch all of the videos this week and then come back to them okay the reason why i i've got these videos for you is because i don't expect you to remember everything the very first time I say it. I that's why I record everything for you guys. Rewatch this video, 
okay? And, and that, that'll help, especially when it comes to getting the citation from the VU Online Library. Feel free to rewatch the other videos. I know it's not like, I, I mean, it's not exciting. I don't have any explosions. I'd like to add explosions, but the point is, that's why I have these videos there for you. So those are there. And if you watch those, I tell you everything that you need to know to do well on this assignment, to do well on your, sum, on your uh, essay. Okay, so that is there. And the SA2 folder, I also have in here an SA2 template, okay? So essentially, even though I'm asking you to do an outline, I've pretty much given you a template to, to work from. This is how your essay should shake down. Yes, you're gonna have an introduction with a thesis statement. Then your first body paragraph is gonna be your summary. And so basically I, I've given you an enormous amount of help here on this assignment, okay? And, and really feel free to reach out to me if you don't understand. But the biggest thing about this assignment is that it's not, I'm not asking you to give me a report on what you read. I'm asking you to tell me what you think about what you read, okay? There's only one paragraph in the whole essay that should be a summary of the, of the article. The rest of them, yes, you should mention, hey, the author said this, and this is what I think about it, right? So you have to mention what the author said in order for, you know, in order to be, to be able to make a comment about what you think about what the author said. And when you do that, it's gonna be a quote or a paraphrase. And the thing is, you know, you can look up, if you have this book, you can look that up, how to do paraphrase, how to do quote, how to, how to do those things, or you can also go online. This is not a secret, okay? This, this stuff is, is what everybody knows how to do on the college level. We all, we all get to this level. And if you don't know how to do it yet, it's time to learn, okay? And so take a look at my video, though. I give you the kind of the... the the, um, I really give you a simplified way of doing it that you can use the rest of your college career. Okay, so I do give you that in that video, especially that last video in the, the SA2 lectures folder. Uh, let's see here, this one, the fundamentals of paraphrasing and quotation in MLA format. So make sure to watch that video because I, I give it to you pretty, that's the easiest way to learn it in my opinion. Okay. So having said that, let's review. This is what is due by the end of this week. And you don't have to hand any of this in by the end of the week, but you should have it completed. If you haven't already read the SA2 assignment sheet, you need to read it. You need to read the two new assigned readings, Love in the Age of Like and Growing Up Tethered. Okay, Growing Up Tethered is in the textbook. Love in the Age of Like is in our SA2 folder. And by the end of the week, you should have completed your brainstorming, clustering, or free writing. You should have completed your audience awareness paragraphs. So of course you're watching the videos, all those videos, you gotta watch all the videos, okay? And then you should begin your outline for your essay. You don't have to have it done, but you should have your outline started at that point, all right? And then you can take a look ahead at what's coming up next week. Next week, your summaries are due. Next week, by the end of the week, you should have a rough draft done because by Friday of week eight, your SA2 is due, okay? So all those things are coming. You still have plenty of time as long as you get started. And again, lastly, again, I am in my virtual office most of the day on Mondays. I'm gonna try to be here today. Today's Monday, I'm making this video. It's about nine o'clock. So no one's dropped into my virtual office hour uh, during the regular eight o'clock hour, but I do offer, I will be in and out, but, but mostly in my virtual office till about three o'clock today. And I also, of course, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 a.m. And then Tuesday, Thursdays, usually one between one and three, but always on Tuesdays and Thursdays, please check in with me because those are also times whenever I make appointments for, for doing some, some other work with my, uh, with, with Project Excel and some of the other things that I do. So, uh, you know, and then of course, if those times don't work for you, email me and we can work out a time that we can, that will work for, for both of us because I want to help you. So reach out. Again, most of you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work. 
Have a great week. I will uh, see you guys next week and uh, time to get to work.